Yet another study warns that winter could make the COVID pandemic worse. New research suggests cold temperatures and low humidity may make COVID-19 more infectious. According to the study in Public Health, colder climates could be why countries in higher altitudes have reported more cases of the coronavirus so far. The study tracks the progression of COVID-19 since the initial outbreak in China, city of Wuhan, and correlates the cases with monthly average environment temperature. The results show that the majority of countries with high infection cases are situated in high latitudes. Cold environment may be an additional risk factor for SARS-CoV-2 infection, according to the paper's authors. Central University of Rajasthan Shandi Mandal and M.S. Panwar of the Banaras Hindu University. While the researchers cautioned further research is needed to prove the temperature coronavirus link, they note that such a relationship would mean summer could reduce the number of COVID-19 infections. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, U.S. coronavirus cases have climbed to 2.9 million. It makes one wonder, if this is what reduced infections look like, how bad will things look this winter? In other more cheerful news, scientists say COVID is becoming less deadly, but also more infectious. Wait, that's not cheerful. Hold on a sec. Scientists say the coronavirus is becoming more infectious without becoming more deadly. Here's why this is important. According to new research, the coronavirus had bifurcated into G and A viruses when COVID-19 spread to California in March. The study published in Cell states that the G viruses which are now the dominant type globally, are differentiated from A viruses by variations in the spike protein. Spike proteins are the sugar protein structures on the coronavirus's shell that help the pathogen break into host cells. The G-type coronaviruses replicate more efficiently than D viruses by a factor of two or three times. This means patients infected by the G strain have more viruses in their body. However, testing samples from six San Diego residents, the scientists found that human antibodies eliminated the G strain as well as, if not better than, the D strain. In a news release, lead author Erica Sapphire of La Jolla Institute says being weaker and less deadly is perhaps the G variant's competitive advantage, as people who are asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic are more likely to infect others. The virus doesn't want to be more lethal, it wants to be more transmissible. It wants you to help it spread copies of itself. It wants you to go to work and school and social gatherings and transmit it to new hosts, Sapphire is quoted as saying. Also, Florida discovers that the local reptiles are not the only things interested in eating your brains. A brain-eating amoeba case that is almost always fatal has been reported in Florida. Here is what you need to know. Health officials in Florida confirmed on July 4th that one person in Hillsborough County has been infected with a deadly brain-eating amoeba called Nigliera fowleri. The amoeba typically lives in warm fresh water and, in rare cases, infects humans through contaminated water that enters the nose. Once in the nose, the amoeba passes through the sinus membrane and into the olfactory bulb. It enters the brain through the floor of the cranium. Inside the brain, the amoeba reproduces via binary fission and consumes brain tissue. According to the Florida Department of Health, Nigleria fowleri can cause primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, an infection that resembles both meningitis and encephalitis. Symptoms start around five days after infection. They can include headache and a stiff neck, fever, nausea, and vomiting. Most of those infected die within a week. So how much should you worry? Fortunately, infections are extremely rare in the U.S. According to the CDC, only 34 infections were documented between 2009 and 2018. Of these, 30 people were infected by recreational water, 3 people were infected after performing nasal irrigation using contaminated tap water, and 1 person was infected by contaminated tap water used on a backyard slip and slide. If this isn't enough to reassure you, remember the amoeba can only enter the body through the nose, so if you go swimming, keep your nose out of the water or use nose clips. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.